Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Director, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. Was Austria-Hungary condemned to fail? Since the creation of the Habsburg Empire in Central Europe, after the Battle of Mohac, the core imperial discourse changed several times. Nevertheless, in the Habsburg's kingdoms and lands, within and without the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation, in the Austrian Empire between 1804 and 1866, and in the Austrian Hungarian monarchy between 67 and 1918, multi ethnicity, multilingualism, and multiculturalism became key elements of the rule. So the so-called Kronprinzenwerk, under the patronage of Archduke Rudolf, was produced by 432 authors and uh, 264 artists, and showed in uh, 24 volumes uh, the common purpose among the peoples of the monarchy and promoted strategies of convergence. When Napoleon I had uh, proclaimed himself Empereur de Francais in May 1804, he prompted an immediate response from the Habsburg Francis II, the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. The announcement in August of the same year that he himself would henceforth be a hereditary Emperor of Austria, thus promoting himself from Francis II to Francis I. There was now an Austrian Emperor, but no Austrian Empire as a central state like France. The French Revolution equated people with nation and state and taught that sovereignty now belonged to the community of citizens. One variant of um, modern nationalism, the state nationalism, equated the concepts of nationality and citizenship and introduced one state language. But what did this equation mean for the Habsburg monarchy, where at the beginning of the 19th century the Austrian Empire ruled over 11 different nationalities and six uh, major confessions, and where political and cultural boundaries did not coincide. How could ethnic uh, nationalism, the second variant, start at the grassroots against the policy of the government? How did the political and cultural elites of the peoples without a sovereign state react to the modernization of the empire? After the reorganization of Europe at the Congress of Vienna in 1814-1815, the Austrian Empire remained the central power of the continental system of equilibrium. But Austria and its state chancellor, Prince Metternich, was essentially too weak to assume the role effectively. Nonetheless, many of the borders agreed upon in Vienna were to endure for over a century. But Austria could not follow the powerful trend of the young German national movement because of a national counter movement of Magyars, Itali Italians, Poles, Czechs, and Croats existed against the impending Germanization. The fundamental weakness of the Habsburg <coughs> Empire was that of its 11 major peoples. Only five, the Magyars, Czechs, Croats, Slovaks, and Slovenes, exclusively live within the empire the borders, while the majority of the other six, the Germans, Italians, Poles, Ukrainians, Romanians, and Serbs, lived outside the monarchy. Curiously, however, the Metternich period was one of the vigorous springtime for the national cultures of some of the non-German peoples of the Austrian Empire, particularly the Magyars, the Czechs, the Slovaks, the Croats, and the Slovenes. The creation of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences by Count Istvan Széchenyi in 1825 was a landmark on the way to a modern Hungarian nation-state. 
But Leuris Korschuld and his diet of the youth forgot the demands of the other nationalities in Hungary, especially of the Illyrian movement, of the Croat intelligentsia around Ludwig Guy, who was supported by some members of the Vienna Staatskonferenz, especially by Count Kolobrat. Nevertheless, in 1844, the new liberal gentry made Hungarian the official language of all authorities, courts, and schools within the confines of the kingdom. And three years later, the Croatian diet replaced Latin with its own vernacular as the official language in the Croatian Slavonia. In March 1848, almost no one in Europe expected Austria to assert itself against the combined onslaught of liberalism and nationalism. Some days after rumors of new French unrest reached Vienna, Koschel demanded in the lower house of the Hungarian Diet in Boschon, today in Bratislava, the transformation of our present system of government by uh, committees into a responsible and independent Hungarian ministry. Members of the estates of Lower Austria prepared an address uh, to, and on the 12th March, the students of Vienna resolved to present the emperor a petition demanding freedom of the press, instruction and religion, and general popular representation. On Monday, the 13th, uh, the, 13th the streets of the city, Vienna, uh, began to fill with students, workers, sightseers, and rowdies who broke into the Landhaus. Now the burghers, the civil guard, and the armed students demanded the dismissal of Metternich. Emperor Ferdinand, who, when told of the outbreak of the revolution, had apparently said, but do they have permission? immediately made a rapid retreat, declaring, tell the people I agree to everything. In the evening of that day, the Staatskonferenz forced Metternich to resign, and the following night, he left Vienna to England. The challenge from the German National Assembly in Frankfurt affected not only the German Austrians, but also the Czechs in the Bohemian lands, the Slovenes in Styria, Carinthia, Caniola, and Gorizia, and the Italians in Littera and Trentino. Following the example of the Czech historian Franciszek Balatsky, 70 Austrian electoral districts, most of them in Bohemia, were not represented at Frankfurt, either because no elections were held there or because the elected delegate did not show up. On the other hand, uh, national movements spread throughout the Habsburg monarchy. Everywhere the bearer of demands for constitutional civil liberties and an autonomous political existence. Therefore, the Czechs, Slovaks, Slovenes, and Ukrainians converted to Austro-Slavism, and the Croat, Serbs, and Romanians sided with the Kurd and the Austrian government against the Hungarian government of Count Lajos Vodjani. Fearing a new revolution of armed students and workers in Vienna, the Kurd fled to Innsbruck, but the 81 years old Field Marshal, Count uh, Radetzky, led a multinational force to a series of victories against Piedmont, Sardinia, and their revolts in, in Milan and Venice. The first clear sign that the revolutionaries were vulnerable. Also, the political strategy of the Czechs, the Slovaks, the Ruffins, the Slovenes, and the Croats was based on the conviction that the Habsburg monarchy was a suitable system for small nations situated between Russia and Germany, only if it had a relatively federal organization. The alien 48-49 revolution demonstrated the mutual incompatibility of the various European nationalist movements. 1849, the poet Franz Grippatzer delivered his radical verdict against nationalism in general. To 
Confrontation. Der Weg der neuen Bildung geht von Humanität durch Nationalität zur Westalität. The path of reason education leads from humanity through nationality to brutality. End of quotation. But the Habsburgs learned one important thing from their revolutionary experience. The old a-national eh or supranational ways were obsolete. The future would have to be multinational. Therefore, for example, in 1849, the Austrian government started to print a Reichsgesetzblatt in all languages of the nationalities. Professor Miklosic uh, translated uh, um, uh, the, uh, this, uh, this laws uh, in the uh, Slovene uh, vernacular. Prime Minister Lord Palmerston declared in the House of Commons in July 1849, quotation, Austria is the most important element in the balance of European powers. Austria stands in the center of Europe, barrier against encroachment on the one side and against invasion on the other. The political independence and liberties of Europe are bound, in my opinion, with the maintenance and integrity of Austria as great European powers. And the Austrian Prime Minister Felix uh, Prince Schwarzenberg believed that the Habsburg Empire, strengthened by central administration, would be able to regain its European position. Together with his Minister of Trade, Bock, they abolished uh, the internal customs barrier with Hungary and planned to create a central European economic entity hoping this plan would attract not only the Germans in the Austrian Empire, but also those living beyond its borders, creating an empire with 70 million inhabitants. But France and Russia resisted, while Russia promoted the Zollverein, the customs union, um, without Austria. Austrian politics in the age of neo-absolutism stood in contrast to the so-called Zeitgeist, the spirit of the times. The centralizing, Germanizing New Austria was, at the same time, a civic state, which retained the basic achievements of bourgeois revolution. The freeing of the serfs, the legal equality of citizens, proportional taxation, and modern rules for gymnasia and universities. The government placed middle-class specialists into offices previously occupied by elected officials and attempted to separate consistently administrative and judicial functions. Private capital constructed a railway system from Vienna to Krakow, Trieste, the Südbahn, Budapest and Salzburg. After the breakdown of the system of neo-absolutism in 1859, a new constitution with the establishment of a two-chamber uh, parliament and new diets in the crown lands tried to establish a political balance between the landowners, the bourgeoisie, and the well-educated Bildungsbürgertum. Also, the new Reichsrat should include Hungary Transylvania, Croatia, Slavonia, and the military border, the liberal uh, nobility under the leadership of Ferenc Diak <laughs> demanded the reunification of the country, of the Kingdom of Hungary, and the Croatian Sabor with the influential uh, Bishop Josip Jura Strossmeyer opposed to send deputies to the Vienna Reichsrat too. After 1815, the system of inter international politics had changed to the disadvantage of Austria. Because of its neutrality in the Crimean War, the Austrian foreign policy was isolated from both the Western powers and Russia. So Napoleon III could pursue the expulsion of Austria from Italy, when the new Prussian Prime Minister Otto von Bismarck forced Austria's exit 
from the German Confederation. With the establishment of the Kingdom of Italy and the German Empire, the era of the sovereign nation-state began in Central Europe too. In 1866, the distrust between the dynasties of Habsburg and Hohenzollern and the increasing antagonism between Austria and Prussia came to the last round in that long struggle for supremacy in Germany. On July the 3rd, 1866, north of the Bohemian fortress Königgrätz to the Hradovs Kralove, uh, a combination of better logistics, more modern weapons, and superior generalship uh, decided a battle of about 440,000 men in favor of Prussia. After the Austrian defeat, the days of the Habsburgs, as German princes were over. But the problem of national identity, which had uh, become so pressing for German Austrian intellectuals uh, since the beginning of the 19th century, did not go away. You claim that you have founded the Reich, Grimpatzer criticized Bismarck in 1866. But all you have done is to destroy a folk. The new Habsburg foreign minister, Count Friedrich Beuys, was convinced that the great power uh, position of the Habsburg Empire, which for the Emperor was the raison d'etre of its existence, could only be guaranteed by dualism, with its acknowledgement of German and Mother hegemony over the Banzlaus. So the compromise, the Ausgleich of 1867, became the basic law of a new country. Austro-Hungarian monarchy, or Austro-Hungary. Both states, Austria and Hungary, were sovereign in their internal affairs and possessed full equality in common affairs. But the Emperor of Austria and Apostolic King of Hungary decided upon war and peace, uh, presided over the Crown Council, appointed the common ministers, the prime ministers, the Austrian and Hungarian ministers, the governors of the provinces, the Croatian banos, the mayors of Vienna and Budapest, the generals and admirals, and the high ranking officials, including judges and university professors. Tempi <laughs> passati. The common affairs, KUK, imperial and royal under the Emperor King, where the foreign policy, military affairs, and finances uh, needed for this, as well as the common currency, the national bank, customs barrier, and trade agreements. Also the common uh, council of ministers, the foreign minister, the, the minister of war, the minister of finances, the Austrian prime minister, and the Hungarian prime minister, had no constitutionally defined sphere of competence, practical necessity make it to a governing body. While Hungarian political leaders, in the words of Josef Oertwösch, were convinced that the existence of the empire is at the same time the preliminary condition of our existence, the Hungarian existence, the German Austrian liberals recognized that the dualism guaranteed them not only a constitution, but also a German centralism in the narrow Austria, in the face of a real possibility of provincial or national federalism. As a result of the Austro-Hungarian compromise, uh, the so-called December Constitution in 1867 established a centralized political entity, henceforth officially called Kingdoms and Lands, represented in the Reichsrat and unofficially Cisnathania since 1915, only simply Austria. But a positive aspect uh, of the laws forming the December Constitution was, in the eyes of the Czechs, Poles, Ruthenes, Romanians, Slovenes, Croats, Serbs and Italians, a comprehensive bill of rights, above all a guarantee of equal rights of languages customary in a given land, in schools and government agencies. The adoption of the new constitution approximately marked the time 
when the public administration and judiciary was reformed to correspond with the spirit of the new era of mild liberalism. In contrast uh, to the famous Austin Article 19 from 1867, with equal rights for all Volkstimme nationalities, the Hungarian nationality law 44 from 1868 established along the French nation state model only one nation, the Hungarian, and did not grant to the nationalities collective national rights or political institutions. Moreover, Hungarian became the state language, not German in Austria, don't forget this, uh, to be used in the parliament, the courts, and higher education. Other languages in uh, Hungary were admissible in churches, county and municipal uh, governments, as well as in primary and some, only some secondary schools. The only important concession of the Budapest government uh, to national interest was the Hungarian-Croatian uh, Compromise of 1868, an agreement unlike the Austro-Hungarian Compromise, concluded not between political equals, but unequals. <coughs> In contrast to Britain, France, Germany, the United States and Russia, all of which were uh, perceived as nation-states with almost no specific rights for smaller ethnic groups, the polyethnic Austria-Hungary appeared unsuccessfully and backward. Unlike the other great powers, including even the Italians, the Habsburg did not have overseas colonies about which they could gloat uh, and around with which the peoples of the Austrian and Hungarian halves of the monarchy might unite in pride and self-interest. But also the dynasty's role had declined after 1866. Its basic thinking about power and status had not. To act and to be seen to act as European great power remained Francis Joseph's overriding objective. Anna, a concept so uh, uh, clear uh, uh, to the long-time uh, emperor also reflected the values and mentality of the male, uh, dynastic, aristocratic, military, and ecclesiastical elite that ruled Austria-Hungary. Nothing gives a clear indication of the variety of the stages of modernization in the Austro-Hungarian monarchy than the industrialization. The first zone was the western part of the Austrian half, the Bohemian and Austrian lands, including uh, here Canula and the coastal lands, which got, did not differ markedly from Western Europe in its industrial development. Technology and productivity in the textile industry and machine building were entirely up to Western standards. The same was true later of the chemical and electrical industries. Also the Austrian women lands <coughs> were dependent on Hungary for food, the Austrian breweries and the Bohemian Moravian sugar factories became very famous. According to recent calculations, domestic productivity per capita was at almost the same level in the Austro Bohemian region as in France, the Netherlands or Sweden and only 25% lower than in Germany. In Hungary, the second zone, the first wave of industrialization started up after the Compromise of 1867. The first important factor which gave impetus to this process was railway building, uh, which brought a, a larger inflow of foreign capital, which contributed to the rise of coal and iron production. The second was the fact that economic and political conditions in the Austro-Hungarian monarchy were very favorable for Hungarian agricultural uh, products. The large amounts of capital which the merchants uh, thus accumulated, they invested in the flour mill industry, which became the leading branch in Hungary's industrialization. And Budapest became the second largest milling center for, of the world after 
Minneapolis. The second wave of industrialization in Hungary took place between 1890 and 1913 and brought the rise of the machine and sugar industry. Hungary accounted then for about 25 to 28 percent of the Malachi's uh, industrial production. The third zone of the absolute monarchy was, of course, Galicia, Bukovina, Dalmatia, and Bosnia Herzegovina. Partly was also Croatia. Its main distinguishing feature was an inability to shake off the inertia typically of pre industrial economies with more than 80% agricultural population. Galicia was backward in industrial development. This was due to natural and historical causes. While industrialization became a driving force in the Prussian Upper Silesia, so in the west of Galicia, or in Poznan, or in some cities of Russian Poland, like uh, Wuch or Warsaw, the age of steam and electricity overlooked Galicia. Only some oil fields near Drohovich initiated some smaller oil refineries. Also, they produced in 1905 5% of the world production. Incredible. But the Hungarian government supported the larger refinery in Fiume, Rijeka. The Austrian government did the same in Trieste. And both Fiume and Trieste imported Russian and American crude oil. Therefore, Galicia stayed the poorest of the three partitions, uh, partition Polish land, with an acute overpopulation in the countryside. So, for hundreds of thousands of Poles, Ukrainians, and Jews, emigration to the United States was a viable alternative. David Good calculated the levels and uh, growth rates of. Thank you. Uh, of, uh, uh, income per capita in uh, 22 regions of the absolute empire between 1870 and 1910 and presented some surprising uh, results. Belonging to the level in 1817, of course, Lower Austria with Vienna was on the top, followed by Bohemia and Silesia. The first surprise were, uh, was Salzburg at the fourth place, followed by Moravia. The literal with Trieste, Upper Austria, Tyrol, Fornberg, and Corinthia, and then uh, Kaliuga. The first Hungarian region came not before the tenth place, namely Daniel Tisza with Pest. The last three places shared Transylvania, Dalmatia, and Croatia Slavonia. Up to 1910, Lower Austria, Bohemia, Salisa, and Salzburg held their places. But at the fifth place stood now the Danube Tisa region, followed by the literal Moravia. The last place took now the Lumetia, behind Croatia and Slavonia. Altogether, uh, the Habsburg Empire grew more rapidly in the late 19th century than most European economies, including in Germany, so that by 1910 its GDP per capita stood at nearly 46% of the United Kingdom level. But the border regions in the south and in the east, so um, Dalmatia, Bosnia Herzegovina, Croatia, Slavonia, Transylvania, Trans uh, Transylvania, and uh, uh, East Galicia, Bukovina, remained the poorest parts, affected especially the Croats, Serbs, Romanians, and Ukrainians. Also, the army had lost the wars in Italy in 1859 and Germany in 1866. Garrison of imperial and royal troops carrying the yellow flag with its black double eagle uh, throughout the Erbland and Bohemia, Galicia, Hungary, and Croatia. Dramatized imperial presence to even the most indifferent peoples. The army became a melting pot of nationalities, toward which officers and men felt a Schwarzgeld loyalty, transcending national origins. All officers were hofeig, and like the aristocracy, they addressed each other as du, even between the field marshal and the, uh, the young lieutenant. 
as a language of command, existed an 80 word German vocabulary. But many officers spoke the different languages of their soldiers. Aside from this uh, common army were introduced after 1867, the Austrian Landwehr and the Hungarian Hohenwelt, a second line. Like Emperor Francis Joseph, the KUK army was more respected than feared, more popular than effective. Together with the help of bureaucracy, it helped to supply to the Danube Basin a unity that since 1918 the region has sorely lacked. Ostensibly, the bureaucracy's mission was to extend uniformity throughout the empire, westernizing the non German peoples and regimenting everyone to obey edicts of the crown. Emblems of uniformity blanketed the empire. Every courthouse, post office, railway uh, station uh, wore a yellow shield with a double headed eagle. The title Hofrat, which had been introduced in 1765 for high officials, still existing in Austria, was sup uh, supplemented with new titles after 1850, such as Sektionschefs, Ministerialrat, and Sektionsrat. Sektionschef Ministerialrat uh, still existing too. Friedrich Kleinwächter, two times rector of the University of Chernowitz, today Chernivtsi, and one of the best analysts uh, of the imperial administration, described the ideal of an Austrian official as a quotation, a man who had a perfect command of the German language, but having no kind of national consciousness. Not even a German, if he happened to be a German. A man who was devoted to the dynasty as a blind instrument without a semblance of criticism. Naturally, this ideal was not reached to a large extent. It flourished most outstanding in the old official and noble families, and with the natural feeling was stunted by transferring them from one country to another, and so eradicating their own soil from them. This man sought to find a poor substitute for the missing idea of a nation, and of a state in the ideal of the so-called Austrian one, end of quotation. When Austria modernized its secondary and higher education after 1848, with universities, technical colleges, classical gymnasia, realschulen and real gymnasia, enrollments grew remarkably and the expansion of uh, parallel developments in much of Western Europe. Including the elite gymnasia of Roman Catholic orders like the Benedictine, the Pierist, the Jesuit, and the, uh, the Ursuline for the girls, also here in, in Ljubljana. In 1909-1910, the mother tongue of uh, all students in Austria uh, in Austrian uh, gymnasia and argument, there was 37% uh, German, 28% Polish, 17% Czech, 8% uh, Ukrainian, 3.2% Slovene, 3.1% Italian, 1.4% Serbian Croatian, and 1.1% Romanian. Attendance in Austrian academic schools and especially technical colleges, in fact, grew faster than in the Prussian schools during much of the period between 1850 and 1910. New social elements from the lower middle class gained access and the social products of the schools became larger and more highly differentiated in its training and subsequent occupations. German speakers and, uh, owed their continuing over representation among students in higher education to their long-standing social, economic and political advantages over the other ethnic groups. Nonetheless, German-speaking peasant and craft families in the Alpine provinces, slower economic transformation, the survival of traditional values, and greater distances uh, to educational institutions than for residents of uh, Lower Austria, Bohemia, Moravia, or Silesia, limited uh, the enrollment. But German-speaking students, including the Jews, could study at the universities of Vienna, Graz, Innsbruck, Prague, uh, then uh, after 1882 the German part, 
and Czernowitz, uh, the faculties of law and philosophy. But the Czech language was uh, used at the Czech part of the Charles uh, Fernand University since 1882. Polish at the University of Krakow and Lemberg, and Romanian at the Faculty of Theology in Czernowitz. After 1900, uh, there were seven Austrian technical colleges, two in Vienna, Prague, a Czech and a German, uh, Brno, also a Czech and a German, Graz, and uh, Lwów, Lemberg. A special college by Debrecen and Poshon uh, run Hungarian universities and Zagreb and Croat. Neither the Italians nor the Slovenes and the Serbs, neither the Slovaks nor the Ukrainians and the Romanians had the possibility to study in their languages. Therefore, uh, the Italians demanded a university in Trieste, the Slovenes in Ljubljana, and the Ukrainians in Lemberg. Since 1875, uh, the Eastern question occupied the intention of the Austro-Hungarian diplomacy. At the Congress of Berlin in uh, July 1878, Count Jule Andrasi, the elder, achieved the occupation of the Ottoman provinces of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, a year later, he signed a dual alliance uh, with Prince Bismarck, joining also Hungary's se security with Europe's greatest military power. But the Balkan policy led to a total break with Russia after 1887. When Count uh, Karoliku and Hedabari uh, ruled Croatia Slavonia with a dividend imperial policy between the Croats and the Serbs, violating the weak Hungarian Croat Compromise of 1868, the South Slav student generation of the 1890s founded new associations in Prague and Vienna and uh, created in 1906 a Croat Serb coalition in Zagreb, Sabo. Now, the Foreign uh, Minister, Alex <coughs> Lexer from Eantal, together with the Hungarian government, threatened this coalition and the government in Belgrade recognizing that Serbia would play the role of Piedmont in the Balkans. But when uh, Count Eantal proclaimed the annexation of Bosnia-Herzegovina in October 1908, he produced sharp protests from the Entente powers, Russia, the Ottoman Empire and Serbia. Only Germany supported its ally openly, deepening the chasm between the Allen system, very important then for the, for the July uh, crisis in 1914. Also in uh, January 1909, the Caniola Diet welcomed the annexation after the beginning of the First Balkan War in October 1912. The Slovene members of the Reichsrat, also the Roman Catholic priest Janis Krieg and Anton Korozhets, declared their sympathies for the Serb brothers. But the most important writer of the Slovene, Moderna, Ivan Zanka, critically rejected such romantic Yugoslav attitudes for quotation. By blood, uh, we are brothers, by language, cousins. By culture, which is the fruit of centuries of the separate upbringing, we are less familiar to one another than the upper Canadian peasant um, is with the Tyrolean or the Goritz Wintner with the Friulian. End of quotation. After all, Austria Hungary had a monarchy that possessed enormous cultural force and public respect, and a state bureaucracy that commanded an equivalent level of stern civic legitimacy. This is the other, less ironic and less magic side of Kafka's castle. Vienna became as a result of the stimulating effects of ethnic and religious pluralism, one of the leading European cultural metropolis, the birth city in art, philosophy, and psychology, as well as a mecca of medicine. The same is true for the music, the painting, the literature, <coughs> as well as the architecture. Legal theorists, economists, and sociologists uh, urge reforms 
by the Vienna's coffee houses, theaters, and concert halls stimulated creativity together with complacency. Therefore, Vienna should not be seen simply as a competitor of Paris or Berlin, but also as a foil to Budapest and Prague. Because they had from the Empire harbored such a diversity of milieus, the sociology of thinkers can yield as a, as a rich harvest of insights. Despite many negative uh, conclusions about the situation in the spring 1914, Habsburg Empire, along the census of 1910, with uh, uh, 51.4 million inhabitants living on a territory of over 676 square kilometers, was more or less successfully engaged in muddling through in time honored fashion in its last years of peace. Only alarmists thought that Austria-Hungary was drifting towards the abyss. The monarchy did not represent an empire on the verge of dissolution, as perhaps it had in 1848, in 1740, or in 1618. Because the greatest threat to the stability of the empire did not derive from a clash of haves and have nots, but from a possible conflict within its ruling elites, the chance to reform the constitutional unbalanced dual monarchy in a truly parliamentary system was low. Perhaps the establishment of universal suffrage in Hungary, by introducing female suffrage <coughs> in the whole monarchy, would have strengthened the peasant, Christian social, social democrat, and liberal parties at all nationalities to smooth the conflicts between the nationalistic intellectuals everywhere. Much worse was the thinking of Franz Konrad von Hötzendorf, the chief of the general staff. The absolute monarchy could rescue his thinking from its tricky foreign situation only by preemptive strikes against Italy and Serbia. He did not realize that to lose another major war could be a matter of life and death for the whole monarchy. When Archduke Francis Ferdinand and his uh, consort Sophie assassinated in Sarajevo on 28 June 1914, another video of that, where the young Bosnian Serb Gavrilo Princip, the diplomatic system left the government considerable room for political maneuver. Despite contemporary and historical perception of an arms race, even in 1913, only Britain, France, and Germany had more than 1% of their population under arms. Russia, around 1%, also Hungary and Italy, less than 1%. But the Ballhausplatz overreacted to the assassination with an ultimatum to Belgrade. Berlin gave carte blanche to Vienna. Russia's Imperial Council decided to support Serbia. Also, Hungary declared war on Serbia. Russia, backed by France, uh, ordered the general mobilization immediately after the, uh, uh, the uh, declaration of war of Austria against Serbia. Um, Germany declared, uh, thanks to the war plan of General Schlieffen, war on Russia and on France. Britain declared war on Germany, officially because of the neutrality of Belgium, but only officially, not really. And Austria-Hungary, at the end, on Russia. The Emperor King and his ministers in Vienna and Budapest did not realize that they provoked a European war, mobilizing all enemies of the dual monarchy. But even in August 1940, there was an unfamiliar sensation that perhaps the monarchy was not going to die after all, but was instead experiencing a strange uh, rebirth. All its nations, as well as all classes, professions, and creeds initially shared this feeling. Massive pro war demonstrations took place not only in Vienna, Graz, and Innsbruck, but also in Budapest, Krakow, Zagreb, and Prague. Austria-Hungary had to fight more than one war. On the one hand, the Austrian-Hungarian armies fought heavy battles 
against the Russian armies in Galicia, Bukovina, Capaz and Rus and Bolivia, against the Serbian armies in Serbia and Montenegro, against the Italian armies at the Sonzo, Socha, and in South Tyrol, and against the Romanian armies in Transylvania and Wallachia. Due uh, to the defeats of General Konrad in Galicia and General Potyarek in Serbia in 1940, and due to the German help uh, during the attacks in 1915, in the Romanian campaign before 1916, uh, the German Emperor Wilhelm took over the supreme command of all forces of the Central Powers. This was not only a dynastic uh, triumph of Hohenzollern over Habsburg, but also a feat marshal power from Hindenburg and General Erich Ludendorff over the Austrian Hungarian High Command. On the other hand, uh, they increased the war within the monarchy. The economic life, the administration, the judiciary itself was put under warlike absolutism. And it might uh, a series of prosecutions for high treason were made against thousands of Ukrainians, Serbs, Italians, Romanians, Czechs, Slovaks, Slovenes, and uh, Croats, alleged support of Russia. Serbia, Italy, and Romania, even against political leaders like the Czech Karl Kramaric, who was sentenced to death but pardoned uh, by Emperor Charles in 1970. Especially in the Bosnia Herzegovina, a great number of the so-called doubtful element were brought into court or in camps without any serious judicial investigation. Many hundreds of peasants, mainly Serbs and Ukrainians, were shot by the court marshal of nervous officers. Anti-Ukrainian villages were encircled and burned by also Hungarian regiments uh, uh, because uh, they found pan-Slavic attitude of the population uh, to be dangerous. But only Slavonic and Romanic uh, soldiers began to oppose a war against their national feelings. Even German among their peasants and workers in the, uh, gray uh, field uniforms began to realize that they were more cannon fodder than willing fighters. World War I uh, saw the highest rates of military participation in all history. At the peaks of wartime mobilization, France and Germany had more than 30 percent of their populations in the services. Britain more than 9 percent, Italy more than 8, Austria Hungary just over 7, and Russia slightly less. At the end, uh, in November 1918, the First World War count more than 9.5 uh, million servicemen, the lives approximately 2 million Germans, 1.8 uh, million Russians, 1.3 million French, 1.2 million also Hungarians, 800,000 Ottomans, 700,000 British, um, almost 600,000 Italians, uh, almost 300,000 Serbs and Montenegrins, etc. The moral indignation against the war found a passionate expression in Karl Krauss' monumental masterpiece, The Last Days of Mankind, the next time I mentioned, written in the fateful years of 1915 to 1917, but published naturally only in 1922. The Viennese poet and critic suggested that man fought because of the jingoist propaganda of the censors or cynical press. And he depicted the war mainly as a criminal plot of military adventures and of uh, greedy businessmen, a conscious conspiracy plot of scoundrels and idiots against the people. After the Bolsheviks um, accepted ceasefire in uh, February and March 1918, the Central Powers signed peace uh, treaties at Prestitovs with the Ukraine and then with Soviet Russia. The breakup of the Russian Empire established for eight months a German domination in Eastern Europe, from the Baltic regions down to Romania and to Macedonia. Because the Austrian Hungarian foreign minister, Count Czernin, provoked an official statement by Prime Minister Clemenceau on the so called Sixtus letter, the fate of dual monarchy was tried. Uh, tied to the military fortunes of Germany. On 12 May 1918, in Spa, the Emperors William II and Charles 
first signed a close and long-term treaty between the two empires with a military union and a maximum possible economic coordination. Therefore, the U.S. Secretary of State, Robert Lansing, decided on uh, uh, 30 May 1918 quotation, the Habsburg monarchy has clearly become a settlement of uh, Germany. It must be blotted out as an empire. End of quotation. When the moral of the German army began to crumble in August 1918, it was clear that Germany could no longer win the war. Therefore, when the Germans offered an armistice to President Wilson, the joint Council of Ministers in Vienna did the same, asking for peace negotiations based on the foreign points. But Wilson informed the last foreign minister, uh, Andrzej Schindle Jr., that the conditions changed. The Austro Hungarian army fell apart throughout the retreat of Hungarian, Croat, Bosnian, Polish, Czech, and indeed the German Austrian regiments who simply decided to go home, refusing resistance against the last Italian attack at Vittorio Veneto. On the home front, everyone was claiming their national independence. Poland, Czechoslovakia, the state of uh, the Slovenes, Croats and Serbs, Hungary, the West Ukraine, uh, Ukraine the Republic, and not to forget, German <coughs> Austria. By October 30, one, when the armistice conditions were agreed, no Entente forces had yet entered Austro-Hungarian territory. Uh, the, uh, therefore, the armistice of Padova signed in the Villa Giusti on November the 3rd, 1918, determined the withdrawal of the Austro-Hungarian troops, not only from all occupied territories in Northern Italy, the Balkans and Eastern Europe, but also back to the Pena. The complete demobilization of the Imperial Army and its reduction in peacetime to a maximum of 20 divisions. And in the meantime, the right of the Nathan armies to move freely inside Austria Hungary and occupy strategic points. The Austrian representative, Major General von Weber, had no choice but to accept the terms. In the condition of the Italian commander, General Diaz, that the time agreed was 24 hours later, postponed. Therefore, some 350,000 Australian soldiers were duly stacked their arms on the afternoon on um, November the 3rd, found themselves taken as prisoners of war by the afternoon of the 4th. Emperor King Charles and more than 600 years of Habsburg rule became irrelevant overnight. Habsburg Middle Europa with its Baroque culture, its civilization development, and its protection of nationalities against increasing nationalism and imperialism came to an end. Also, Robert Moses' Kakania and Joseph Rose Hadetsky Marsh immortalized it in the literature. I thank you very much.